just wanted to share it with you. You know, you find treasure. You want to share it with those that you love. It's uh, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. <clears throat> Matthew 4, 16. And I'm reading from the King James. I usually do. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Oh, I got chills. I just love this verse. I love, I love what the Spirit of God wants to say to us. I love what He wants to say to me. I love that there is, there is treasure. There is treasure here and that we can revel in that treasure. <clears throat> um, well, first of all, it says this is to the people, this is written to the people or said to the people that sat in darkness. This is to them. And, and it says that those that sat in darkness saw a great light. And then, and these are Jesus' words. And to them which sat, and so they're sitting there also in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. <clears throat> there is this wonderful light that we don't get when everything's going perfect. There's this place. We don't, we don't always get it here because we have to be enlightened. We have to be aware even as we sit in darkness or even as we sit in the shadow of death. We have to be aware that there is such a thing or we'll just moan. We'll just sit in darkness. <clears throat> but there is a... a a, a valuable light that can only be seen in that dark place, that can only be experienced, that can only shine to us in darkness and in the shadow of death, which seems weird that this is a jubilant thing that is, is Jesus is sharing here. And so uh, with that, I want to share another scripture out of, this one's out of Isaiah 45, 3. And it's a similar, similar verse. And it says this, Isaiah 45, 3, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches, hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which shall call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. And so he's basically saying, I'm the Lord of everything, not just the Lord of the light and the good and the blessing and the, uh, the, <clears throat> the, the things that we, we count as good and beautiful and happy. I am the Lord. And I uh, want to give to you, this is it's the Lord speaking, the Lord, the one who's Lord. I want to give to you the treasures of darkness. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Can we find those? Can we find those treasures? Will we be able to Find that light that he has that you can only get in a dark place and in a dangerous place of death and loss. And, and then he calls it, he, he says that I want to give you treasures of darkness and then hidden, hidden riches, hidden, hidden. They're not obvious. We sit in darkness and all we see is darkness. We sit there, and, and I, when I say we, I don't mean us as a group. I mean people in general, Christians in general. Sit in the darkness and moan, and why am I here, and why did this happen, and this is so terrible, and this is, 
And we never let him give us treasures of that darkness. Because there are treasures of that darkness. And we never let him give us the, the hidden riches. 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 Golly. Treasures. <laughs> And we're, we fight the darkness. We fight the shadow of death. We wrestle as if we've lost God or as if we need to call out to God to get us out of this dark and get us out of this darkness. But he wants to shine his light, this particular light, this valuable light. Uh, uh, Matthew 4.16 said, A great light. Praise God. It's a great light if we can see it. If we can get past just the darkness of the situation and realize the Lord doesn't have to deliver us for us to, to enjoy light and uh, riches and treasures and be with Him and understand Him and find Him and glorify Him. You know, all of those things, all of those things that, that, that would touch him. Yes, they'll touch us. Yes, oh my God, if we're in darkness and we're groaning and weeping and crying and it's bad situation and all this stuff. Yes, it'll help us. It'll bring a light to us and life and his face. If, you know, but the greater, maybe, is that we'll have fellowship with him in places that we couldn't, we couldn't have unless we sat in darkness, unless we sat in the region of death, the shadow of death. It's a region. We have to go there to find this. And yet every time we get there, we don't look for it or we don't, we don't let it shine to us because we resist and unknowingly are resisting treasures, great riches, praise God, but hidden. Great riches, yes, but hidden. And so I want to read a psalm. And this psalm um, is somebody that is sitting in darkness. You can tell by their words. You can tell by their moaning. You can tell by their loss. They are sitting in darkness and the shadow of death is over them. No light. They that sat in the shadow of death, light has sprung up. No light has sprung up yet. But it feels like this person knows that that can happen. There is such a place and such a reality. This is Psalm 13, and it's, we're going to read verse 1 through 3. Psalm 13, verse 1 through 3. And we begin, we begin with this person who's clearly sitting in darkness. Okay. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord? See, in darkness, if, if he doesn't come deliver us, we don't call him Lord. But if he delivers us, we call him Lord. But the verses that we read above is, I will give thee treasures of darkness and hidden riches, saith the Lord. <laughs> I just love that. I just love it. I just love that he can be Lord of all and not just Lord of the high places, the valleys too. How long wilt thou forget me? Because he's in dark places in the shadow of death. He must be forgotten. That must be what's happened. He's been forgotten. No, he's not forgotten. No, he's not forgotten. We're not forgotten. He's bound us to his heart. O oh Lord, how long wilt thou forget me? Forever? Question mark. <laughs> Forever? It's so bad. 
Is this going to last forever? No. Okay. Any of you, have you ever, have you ever gotten into a dark situation and you just thought, this is going to last forever? Maybe it's God changed the situation. It looks like it's going to last forever. Or how about God change me? Change me. Am I going to be this way forever? Am I? Am I? And he would say, did I die on the cross? Yes, yes, you died, but when am I going to die? You died with me. And it was the shadow of death, and I brought you into it. And light is going to spring up to you one day. You won't be delivered from that death. You'll see it in the darkness. Praise God. Praise God. How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Okay. There's an element of, I get this, because he knows that he needs to see the face of the Lord. That's the light. The light that shines out of, out of his face. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Not our deliverance, but of the glory of God where we can sit with him in darkness and fellowship in his sufferings and our sufferings will no longer just be our sufferings but we'll be with him in a special special way hidden to most eyes but riches to those who really understand how and I love verse 2 here I love it I love it I love it how long shall I take counsel in my soul? <laughs> well, that's the that's the sixty-four dollar question. How long are we going to keep taking counsel in our souls, sitting in darkness? And our soul is saying, "Get me out of here, fix me, or fix them, or fix this, or do whatever." When we could be with the Lord in this right spirit, in that in what we call the spirit of the Lamb, but we could be with Him there, and that light will literally eventually shine out of us because it's the Lamb light that lights the whole bride inside of us, just like in the Book of Revelation. Glorious, glorious. How long shall I take counsel in my soul? Well, he would say, I hope not much longer. Stop it. Let's, let's get with me instead of your soul. Having sorrow in my heart daily, how long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Um, let's see. How long will your enemy be exalted over you? As long as it takes. As long as it takes so you can be with me down there in the darkness and in the shadow of death. That's how long it'll take. Can you be with me there? No, no, get me out of here. How long shall, see? Verse 3, consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Here it comes, good, praise God. Lighten mine eyes. See, now he's not just saying deliver me. He's saying there's a light, there's a light connected to this. I'm sitting in darkness and there's a light that I could see. And it would be treasures of darkness to be here instead of to be delivered from this. Treasures. Consider, um, O oh Lord, lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. And that's it. The sleep of death is not what you want. There is a sleep of, of entering into his death, but there's another one that is your death, and you just, you just lose out. You lose out, and you're dead to what is in God's heart, and you're dead to the riches, the treasures, and the hidden riches. And it's just, it's a useless, valueless death. Useless and valueless. So I'm getting a signal. We're getting short here. So I'm going to read a little bit. Hallelujah. 
We sat in darkness as to what was true of God. Uh, what was true of Christ crucified. What was true of the Lamb that settled it all. We thought we needed strength and power. But as long as we view Him with that view, we still sit in darkness and a danger of sleeping the sleep of death. That is not to say that from God we've not been given light concerning subjects, and we have. We've been given light concerning subjects and directions and precious truths. This light, for they that sat in darkness saw a great light, is not the, that same light. This is one that comes to those sitting in darkness. Um, I wrote, even so, this passage informs us that there yet remains a great light, a great light, a great light. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to skip on down here. <laughs> I just love these verses so much that I, I can't hold back. Um, Psalm 23, you know it. You don't need to turn there. Verse I just want to read the first little slip part of verse 1 and then verse 4. The Lord is my shepherd, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord is my shepherd, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord is my shepherd, yea, though I walk. When are we going to be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Woo, he'll whip you and protect you. To bring you into, yea, though I walk through. See, he's bringing you into the shadow of death. The devil's not dragging you in there. The shepherd is. The good shepherd who passed through it, who gave his life for the sheep so that the sheep could do the same thing for him and for others. So I think I just need to read a few things here then. At Christ's death, we are illuminated and a light springs up as to what God is really like. He's a lamb. But also when we find ourselves in darkness... We are in the best possible place to discover His light there. What light? The Lamb is the light of the New Jerusalem, the bride. Have you seen the bride, the New Jerusalem? The Lamb is the light of it. This light is springing up in her. It's the best place. You know, light does a lot better when it's dark. You really can see it. <clears throat> we find that more comes out of death than out of bright places. More does come out of it. The cross is the greatest example of that. I, there's no argument there. There we gain his insight. There, sitting in darkness, probably like Psalm 13, in a quandary, wondering why this is going on, why is this happening, what is happening. Maybe our hearts open up and say, you're still Lord, aren't you? Talk to me. Show me your heart. Show me your nature. Show me, show it to me so that you infiltrate and invade my alien land. Invade my alien land. I'm, a, I'm like a foreign creature to you. Alien in my mind, as it says in Ephesians. I'm an alien in my mind. Lord, be Lord in me and overcome that by showing me your light that allows me to still live in darkness and yet shine forth your Son, Father. I wrote, there in the darkness we are more akin to the Lord. Boy, that, not everyone would agree with that. There we gain His insight. And there we discover that death does not need to be removed, but light must shine on its true meaning, its true use by God, and its true beauty. Well, I will read one more 
scripture here. Revelation 2.10 Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. You don't have to fear the second death. You're already one with him. You're already one with the life that gives itself in death. You don't have to fear. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, I thank you for people that already walk with you in these areas and love you and have had the, that light shine in their dark place. Some in Ireland, some in Texas, some in in Arizona, some in many of the places that we go. And they know, they know that there are treasures to be found there that are beyond any treasure we could find with our eyes wide open in the light of day. And they are hidden, hidden treasures that you want to give unto us the treasures of darkness. When we walk through it, you, you are our shepherd. When we walk through that shadow of death, it shouldn't destroy us. It shouldn't shake us. It shouldn't make us wonder about ourselves or about you or about things that are eternal that cannot be shook. But sometimes it does because we have not yet laid hold while sitting in that darkness and in the shadow of death. That light has not yet sprung up for some of us. And so we pray. We pray not for ourselves, but to cover our brothers and our sisters and our family and those that we don't know that you can speak that you can speak beyond darkness, beyond death. You can speak to us of who you are and who you've made us by your Son. Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. As I always say, thank you so much for letting me be with you and joining in on your heart and your prayers that you prayed prior to this. Amen. I love you.